Hey guys, how's it going? This is Nat Nader, and welcome to another creepy pasta reading. Although, uh, this isn't actually a creepy pasta. It's a post on a forum that has some interesting points about a certain village in a particular game. This is the dream town, Ica Village, in the game Animal Crossing New Leaf. I haven't played the game myself, so unfortunately it doesn't mean much to me, but a friend of mine recommended this read, so... Uh, yeah. Now as always, turn out the light, get comfortable, and let the story begin. Hi. I personally know the creator of Ica Village, and I want to share with you all about the true story behind this village. I think this story deserves more recognition. It is about the creator's life. Basically, it's about a girl who was raped, and how she suffered from many disorders like schizophrenia, personality disorders, etc. I'll explain more about the details below. This topic consists of sensitive subjects, just a heads up to you all. When you first wake up inside the dream, you'll see the strange black and white patterns on the ground all over the place. When you move around and look at these patterns, you'll notice that they'll make your eye vision a bit strange. This symbolizes the point of view in her eyes in her early childhood. She sees things differently from others. Waking up from the bed to see these patterns symbolizes how she had awoken from childbirth and every day of wakings as a baby. She developed disorders and grew up to learn and see things differently. The disorders she developed was personality disorder and schizophrenia. There are flowers around the first house because she used to talk to flowers when she was a child, and because of her disorders, the flowers would talk back to her. When you enter the first house, there is a birthday cake and a present. Of course, this symbolizes her birthday. She got a doll for her birthday. The mannequins symbolize her imaginary friends that she would hallucinate from schizophrenia and her personality disorder as well. The present was her first doll, and she would hallucinate this doll talking to her, just like the flowers. Upstairs is her bedroom. She had many toys as a child, and she loved to paint. She had an art talent and she loved her mother very much. She had a pet dog and lived with her parents. She's an only child, which is why that is painted on the paintings displayed upstairs. When you're walking in the direction of the second house, things start to get a bit ugly. As she grew up, she began to see things more differently and more... scary. Instead of the pretty flowers that used to talk to her, there are ugly weeds. This resembles how she grew up and began to see and hallucinate things differently. It seems that as she grew up, her disorders did as well. And the slow, scary change in the environment in this town resembles this. If you walk to the lost and found, there are tons of beehives this resembles how she used to talk to the bees as well, whenever she would talk to flowers. When you enter the second house, there is a maze. This resembles how her life became a maze as she grew up as a child and struggled with the disorders she had. The signs represent running away. When you finish the maze of chairs, you enter a room and see all those dolls. Those resemble her toys. Because of her schizophrenia, she would hallucinate them with voices. They're turned around from you because in her hallucinations, they turned their backs on her and hated her. 
She hallucinated this because when she was stressed out, especially as a schizophrenic, she hallucinated bad things and as a result she hurt herself, whether it be physically or mentally. So from here, she hallucinated her dolls going against her as a way to hurt herself. At the time, she had no friends, and her only friends were the voices that she heard in her toys. When you turn around, there are eyes on the wall that is looking at the dolls. This resembles her eyes. In these eyes you see confusion, fear, despair, and anger. All because her dolls hate her, and it hurts. Upstairs, there is Adam, Eve, and the snake. She put this in there because she grew up in the religion of Jesus Christ, and she would think that the reason why she lived horribly in her mind is because of Eve, who she believed to be the first woman born on earth, and also the first woman to disobey God and take the apple. She believed that because of this, every woman now would be punished as well as her. She believed that she's being punished with disorders, and she believed that she was born a punishment to her mother because of the disorders she has, and how she took it out on her family many times. In the basement, there is a party. All those dolls represent her imaginary friends and people and dolls she hallucinated voices from. The axe represents the terror behind this disorder. Outside, dog houses are buried, because she killed her own dog from the stress she suffered with. The mittens that lay by the graves represent her hands, because it is her hands that killed her dog. On the beach there are shoes, because she developed severe depression and attempted suicide many times. In the third house, there are bookshelves and the doll. In this point of time, she is around her teenage. The books resemble how she would go around and read about her disorders and ways to treat it. The sound you hear in this room with bookshelves resemble the scary screams she would hallucinate. If you find what item it is coming from, and if you notice, the more you get closer, the more high-pitched it gets. This resembles how every time she attempted to get close to a treatment in her studies, she got very pressured and doubtful of finding a cure. The stress of all this pressure and doubt made her screaming hallucinations worse. The room with the journal and papers resemble her diary pages and drawings. She looked at writing and journalism as a way to relieve the stress these disorders gave her. Upstairs is her room in her teen years. The paintings displayed everywhere represents a drawing of herself. As an artist, she constantly drew herself because growing up with the disorders she had on her own and how she went against herself every time. She thought that loving herself more would change that. In the basement there is a room. The bed has an outline of a person. This resembles how she got raped. The doll is there to resemble her disorders, and the tiny pink baby bed resembles how she suffered with pregnancy from this rape. The doll that sits in front of it resembles how she lost her mind from her disorders, and out of fear and stress, got a miscarriage purposely. In the fourth house, the house is messy. This resembles how messy her life became. Upstairs, she crosses everyone out in the paintings because she realized that she went through all of this alone. Downstairs in the room behind the dresser stands the doll, heads, and the mannequin. This resembles her and her imaginary friends in her head that went through this all alone. All the animal houses have dolls because it represents how her disorders, the doll, got in the way of getting along with people. But if you notice one house, which contains no dolls at all, resembles her best friend that was there for her through all of this. 
the only person who was close to her. His house is space-themed, because in the real life, her best friend loves space. I hope I explained this well. This is how I roll.